All right, so in our hood we have the hydrogen chlorine electrolytic gas generator. Here's the water bath, the trough that we collect the hydrogen chlorine gas. And here we have the actual generator. In this case, in order, we're, we're getting um, almost four volts to drive three amps through a pair of carbon electrodes that are immersed in eight molar hydrochloric acid. So that's concentrated hydrochloric acid, two parts and one part water. And at the end of the tube is a glass elbow that allows me to fill the test tube by water displacement. Now one very important aspect of this demonstration is that the water, the water bath and the gas generator have to run for a number of hours before you start collecting the gas because the water that you start out with is saturated with oxygen. And oxygen um, is a catalytic poison for this reaction. Going to replace the light screen because this is a photochemically active reaction. We want to be careful how much light we expose this to. Right before the demonstration, we fill the tube with fresh hydrogen and chlorine from a water bath that has had hydrogen and chlorine bubbling through it for about three or four hours. I uh, generally set it up overnight and put it at a low uh, put it at a low current, but that clears, that bubbling of chlorine clears the oxygen out of the water. It also turns the water into a, in, it also, the chlorine also, so the chlorine gas bubbling through the water bath clears the oxygen out of the water, but it saturates the water with chlorine. And so if you're wearing any jewelry, especially gold jewelry, it's very important to have gloves on or to take it off because the chlorine water will dissolve the gold right on your finger. Okay, here we have a quartz test tube full of a stoichiometric mixture of hydrogen and chlorine, one to one. And we understand that hydrogen and chlorine is a reaction that can be set off with light. And so we're going to experiment with different frequencies of light to see what the threshold of reaction is. So we're gonna start with red light. Don't see a reaction. Maybe we don't have enough red light. Still no reaction. I'm going to flex our LED collection. We've got orange light. Shorter wavelength, higher energy, yellow light. Moving up the energy scale. We've got green light. Still no reaction. We have a, a, a flashlight with the green LED. So we're dumping a huge amount of energy in the form of green photons and we're still getting no reaction. Now, moving to blue light. No reaction. And finally, ultraviolet. And we see that the ultraviolet light causes an almost immediate reaction. Here we have the product of the reaction of hydrogen and chlorine in the form of hydrogen chloride, which in the humidity of the lecture hall causes a big old cloud to form.